if what we say produces, if we say I'm stupid, how many think it may produce stupid cells? If we say I'm fat, how many think it might produce fat cells? And if we're in the time of double portion, I sure don't need that. How many think we ought to get our mouth in line, okay? We ought to get our mouth in alignment, all right? This is a double portion season. And I believe that God is saying there's a double portion on the words that we speak. So we're going to say some, make some decrees together today that I think are going to release some things into the atmosphere over your life. I want to read to you out of Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. And it says this, on the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Suddenly, they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was all anyone could bear. Then all at once, a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages that they have never learned. I think it's very interesting. This word, they were all filled, is actually a, a, um, a, a, a Greek word that means to be filled inwardly. Now, when it says the room was filled, that means it was an outward filling. How many know you can come into an outward filling, into an atmosphere, and never get filled inwardly? This is why we press you in worship past the barriers of just being a spectator and being a full participator. That's why we say things to you like open your, uh, lift up your hands or we, we have you do actions because we don't want this whole room to be filled with the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit and it not impact you internally. So it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. That means an internal filling. But I love this word. It means that they were filled, they were equipped, and they were completely furnished with everything that they needed to fulfill their ministry call. How many know when God fills you, he wants to touch you, he wants to heal you, he wants to transform our minds, he wants to transform our hearts, but then he wants to fur fully furnish and equip us so that we can take what's happened to us in this place and go out there and begin to impact the hearts and the lives of others. Come on, guys, this stuff is too good to just hang on to all by ourselves. Amen? And so at the very beginning of this Hebraic decade. We are now in the decade, uh, the, the, the year 5781, 2021, 5781 on the Hebraic calendar, um, is when the very first day of Rosh Hashanah, when the calendar flipped over to this new decade, I woke up in bed and I heard the Lord say to me, um, you've now entered into the decade of the dynamo. I jumped up, I wrote it down, I think we kind of have an idea of what dynamo means. But I began to press in and try to understand what it was that the Lord was saying to us for this new season that we're in. So I looked up the word dynamo, and as you'll see in the overhead, it means a forceful, energetic individual. Somebody that is considered a fireball or a live wire. Come on, how many of you would consider yourself a fireball? I know there's a few of you, but I want you to know, for all of you that didn't raise your hand, you've got a fireball on the inside of you, okay? But a, a dynamo is actually a generator that produces direct current for power or for electricity. And so what's very interesting is that this word dynamo, when God said this is going to be the decade of the dynamo, this word dynamo actually comes from a Greek word that we're all familiar with. It is the same root word that produces the word dunamis. How many know this word dunamis? Dunamis in Greek is found throughout the New Testament, and we find it in Acts chapter 1 in direct relationship to what was happening in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Because in Acts chapter 1, it said, Jesus told his disciples, I'm getting ready to go to heaven, and here's my instructions to you. Go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. What was the promise of the Father? 
the Holy Spirit. Do you know that when Jesus said that, there were 500 people present? But on the day of Pentecost, there was only 120. I guess some people had better things to do. <laughs> so we know Jesus said, go back to Jerusalem, wait for the promise of the Father, for you shall receive power. You shall receive dunamis when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So what we read in Acts chapter 2 was that they received tongues. But Jesus said, you won't just receive tongues, you're going to receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You're going to receive an anointing for the dunamis of God to actually indwell you. Now what I have found is that throughout Pentecostal, charismatic Christendom, when most people get filled with the Holy Spirit, they're looking primarily for that one thing. They're looking to speak in other tongues. But I'm telling you, Jesus didn't just say you're going to get tongues when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Of course, Bishop has written a book called 70 Reasons for Speaking in Tongues. We know this is very important. But he said you're going to get dunamis when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And the word power isn't really even enough to describe what Jesus said we receive when we receive the Holy Spirit. How many, wave your hand at me if you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, okay? All right, so this word dunamis means force, might, strength, ability, miraculous power, abundance and wealth, power to produce change, the strength and might of an army, and the anointing to overcome. Come on, so you could actually put any of those words in to the place when Jesus said, you shall receive divine ability when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive strength. You shall receive the force and might of an army on the inside of you when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive the anointing to overcome when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive abundance and wealth when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive dunamis when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And that is going to empower you to go out and be my witnesses. And so... What we have to understand is that on the day of Pentecost, what God displayed to us is that he's giving us a power generator. But how many know a generator doesn't work unless you turn it on? So how do we turn it on? We open up our mouths. We open up our mouths and our mouth becomes the on switch for the generator of power. Amen? When we pray in tongues, it's generating power. Scripture tells us that we're built up in our most holy faith when we start praying in tongues. Okay? Tongues isn't just, a, isn't just something we do when we say, when pastor tells you to do it. It should be something we're doing every single day. And if you're not comfortable with that, jump on at 8.30 in the morning with Tom and Faye Velez on our Vision Church page. And you can pray along with the team. 